In this video, we'll be introducing the subjunctive, and most specifically, the present subjunctive. Remember in Latin, verbs can be broken down to six different categories based on their conjugation, first, second, third, third I.O., fourth, person, first, second, third, number, singular or plural, tense, present, imperfect, future, perfect, past perfect, future perfect, voice, active or passive, and mood. Now we'll learn the third and final mood in Latin. We've learned the first two already. The first is the indicative mood, which is the regular or what we call usual mood that we use in Latin. We use this to present actions. The boy is running. State facts. He is tall. Or ask questions. Why are you here? Most of the time we are using the indicative, and so we don't even think about it when we use this mood. The second mood we learned was the imperative. Imperative comes, it means something that must be done. This is a command. Notice how we use it, ama for the singular, amate for the plural, for the first conjugation, doke, dogete, for the second, singular, plural, pone, ponete, for the third, cape, capite, adi, adite. So, for example, love your neighbor would be ama, teach the children would be doke. Now, we're going to learn the last mood, the subjunctive mood. This, the mood that gives, the subjunctive mood is the mood that gives the speakers or the authors opinion or attitude toward what is being said or written. So the subjunctive mood you can think of is, a sub, is subjective. It gives some opinion on the statement being said. The formation of the present subjunctive is very similar to the way we form the present indicative in both the active and the passive voices. There's going to be a phrase that I want you to remember. It's called, let's beat a giant. And notice how the vowels are highlighted. The E, the E-A, the A, and the I-A. They're highlighted because these are the, what's going to be the vowel changes. When you form the present subjunctive, all you do is you change the stem vowel. For the first conjugation, you're going to change the stem vowel to an E. This will be for the first. The first gets changed to an E. That's our let's. For the second conjugation, you're going to change your stem vowel from an E to an E-A. So this is for our second. That's our beat. And for the third, it's going to be, you're going to change your stem vowel to an A. And then for your third I-O and your fourth, you're going to change your stem vowel to an I-A. So again, when we form the present subjunctive, all you need to do is change the stem vowel. Notice how the stem vowel in the first conjugation is normally A, like amas. It will become an E, ames. In the second, is normally an E for like dokio. It will become dokieam. For the third, something like pon it will become pon at. For the third IO, something in the indicative like uh, cop itis will become copiatis. And for the fourth, something like adimus will become adiamus. Here is how the first conjugation verb porto would conjugate in the subjunctive. So notice the first person singular doesn't have an O for its personal indicator, but it's an M. So instead of porto, it's portem. And then it's ES, ET, EMUS, ETIS, and ENT. Notice how the endings, except for the first person singular, are the same. When we move over to the passive, the same pattern follows. All of the personal indicators, however, will stay the same. The R, the RIS, the TUR, the MUR, the MINI, and the ENTOR. However, the valve, instead of being an O or an A, is always E. E-R, E-R-I-S, E-T-U-R, E-M-U-R, E-M, E-mini, and E-N-T-U-R. For the remaining conjugations, the pattern stays the same. The personal indicator endings are all the same, except for the first singular and the active, where it's M, instead of that O. And look at the vowel changes. For the second conjugation, it's E-M, that's our beat. For the third, it's A. That's our A, and let's beat a giant. And then for the third I-O, it's I-A, that's our giant. 
And then for the fourth, it's also IA, and that's also the giant.